Hello once again to Madam Suzanne, and thank you so much for joining me today. I know I'd say this all the time. This is really a special, special interview. I've been waiting for this for a long time. A lot of the subscribers have been waiting for this for a long time. I have a very special guest today. I have Tanya. Tanya used to work with me in Orange County when I had OC Fun. Uh, just the whole thing about what, what happened with the Madam Suzanne and everything in the first book. So Tanya. Hi. Welcome, finally. Thanks. Sorry it took so long. It's okay. I know you've been busy. You have a lot of stuff going on with your life. So how, how are you doing? I'm just happy that you made it. How are you doing? I am well. Just, you know, normal weekend doing my thing. Awesome. Awesome. You're looking great. I was I was telling Tanya, I haven't seen her in a while. She's telling her she's looking <laughs> younger than ever. So Thanks. whatever she's doing, I want to do the same protocol. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that I've changed up is I'm starting to spin cycle. The spin oh. classes. Yeah, yes. I've actually been doing that, which I've never worked out in my life. So that's awesome. You've always mm -hmm. had a great, great body. So you, you're one of the <laughs> lucky ones, even without working out. But um, you're looking great. So uh, before we start, I'm going to do a quick legal disclaimer. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we're not promoting any prostitution. We're not promoting any pimping. We're not promoting anything illegal here. This is just a conversation about something that happened in the past. And this is for, inf for information use only. Um, and quick question are you over 21 yes okay we got the legal stuff out of the way now so <laughs> uh, tell the audience a little bit uh, about your upbringing your... so I was born in Las Vegas with my mom and dad who are still married today um, so it wasn't from a broken family or anything like that uh, sing, uh, I was the only girl of six I have six siblings or five siblings and then me um, Went to private Jewish school, the normal, you know, my parents were in the casino business. We opened up casinos. So I did travel a lot. Um, yeah. And ended up back in Las Vegas by way of the Navy, the military. I was in the military for a little bit. Got my degree, was went back into Las Vegas and started working in the casinos and then moved out to Orange County for a boy. Oh, like for a relationship? Yes. Yes. Of course. Um, and what made you decide to work as an escort? How did that transition happen from you doing what you were doing before to deciding I want to be an escort? So when I came to Orange County, um, like I said, I was working. I was a, a supervisor in the casinos in Las Vegas. I have two daughters. Um, so I moved here after dating the same guy for, we were dating for two and a half, three years before I moved in with him. Um, and we continued our relationship for another five years until we broke up. Well, during that five years, I didn't work. I didn't, you know, he didn't want me to work because we traveled a lot. And so he wanted me to have a flexible schedule like himself. And so I didn't work. So here it is. We break up. I have no home. I have no job. I haven't worked in over five years now. I have two kids. And I have a amazingly high sex drive. So, you know, the math kind of added up for me and I saw your ad, well, didn't know it was you at the time, but <laughs> your ad and um, it appealed to me because why not do something I want to do? Why not get paid for something I want to do? Yeah, perfect. So, one plus one equals two, right? Right, especially because like I said, I have two kids and I wasn't going to bring anybody home. Like it was, you know, for me to date and have daughters, I have daughters, um, to have a, guys come in my house, whether they're friends or dating or boyfriends, uh, it's not a, you know, it just shows them a revolving door of men. So that's not acceptable. So this was kind of, kind of fed the need that I needed for every aspect of my life. Yeah, it makes sense. So, um, so you found an ad, mm -hmm. right? And yes. I think it was on Craigslist, right? In my final, Correct. Okay, because I had yep. different ads, different places. So, uh -huh. um, so take us from the time when you when you found. There's a lot of ads online. There's a lot of crap on Craigslist. Did you know when you saw the ad that it was legit, or did you have concerns? You had never done it before, right? No, no, never. Okay, so so um, I saw an ad, and I believe that it said, um, like, take home. I don't know, 5,000 weekly or whatever it said. It's, it said like a weekly amount. 
um, no experience necessary, blah, 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 contact, you know, nothing major. It didn't say anything major, but it didn't, you know, just said. Like so it was that. the money. It was the money uh, oh, in the headline that, that got. So let me ask you this. Were you thinking about escorting ever before? Was that a fantasy of yours before, before you, you really needed the money? Um, well, it wasn't necessarily, I would never say it was a fantasy, but because I know how much I enjoy having sex and because I know having kids, um, it was always um, something that I was willing to explore. Okay. Gotcha. Does that make sense? So yes. it wasn't necessarily a fantasy, although it's, it's, you know, it could be, you know, and the whole thought process of the whole thing does kind of make it, uh, kind of fantasize the whole job, but it does feed the need of my overactive libido. Got you. So, so you, you see the ad, mm -hmm. we go through emails, I believe mm -hmm. you and I, yep. and then we get on the phone and we start talking, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> before we, before we met. Now, when we started talking, did you never done this before? So what made you trust that process like you didn't know you know you didn't know me I, I didn't know you like what made you when or i guess the question is when did you start believing that this might be real so how about and, and i don't think i've ever told you this but um so i didn't really know exactly what i was responding to until we met in person i didn't know exactly the full like um details of what was like, oh, okay, so this is an escort agency, got it. Like it wasn't until then, and I remember you saying something to me um, when we met at Starbucks about, about being in the business and because I'm from Las Vegas and I'm kind of street smart and I kind of have my little, I mean, I can sell anybody anything really. So I think that you, believe, you thought that maybe I had been around it, not necessarily in it, but around it. And so you were kind of very nonchalant about um, tell me what it was, you know, and telling me like, you know, what exactly the job was. And so it wasn't until Starbucks that you said something and I was, oh, it's an escort job. Okay. So it was like, all right, let me just take a deep breath real quick. Okay. Got it. Oh, so, sorry, and then, a... and then, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, and then it wasn't, so that whole car ride home or car ride over to the place because you showed me a, a unit. Um, that night and that whole car ride over, I was like, okay, I can do this. It's no big deal. You know, blah, blah, blah. He seems legitimate. He seems like he's a genuine person, everything. But that whole car ride, which was not very long, was no. just me going, okay, Jessica, talk like self-talk the entire time. So let me ask so, you this. Yeah, you so didn't know that. I never, I never told you over the phone anything when we talked on the mm -hmm. phone before we. Nope. Mm -mm. So what did you think it was before I told you? I you mean, know what? I had money, no right? idea. Really? I had no idea. Yeah, exactly. I was like, okay, wait. Um, yeah. So I just didn't know. So I kept going just because I was still intrigued. You know, I was intrigued by the money. And, you know, I was like, all right. Well, you know, I don't have very um, high look. Like I have a lo very low inhibitions. You know what I mean? So yes, yes. I was okay with going, going with the flow. But you know, um, yeah, it wasn't until... Starbucks. I didn't know that. I thought because uh, I, for, for the most part, I use a one-way concept, right? And I usually give people hints over the phone once I know that they're not, you know, right. law enforcement or they're not, you know, trying to do something weird or negative or whatever. So I had to screen, screen people first. Right, right, right. And I think that that's what you were doing was probably being overly cautious because when I, when I started with you, it was just a little bit before it was like the beginning of the end kind of you know time wise when did you start so, with me what month do you remember and well i started with you in yeah it was uh april 2016. Mm -hmm. yeah and then yep. i stopped in uh june june 9 2000 mm -hmm. and then started back up and that's when everything happened so you didn't have really enough time to to get to your money goal well no but but i you know you already know I made my money. Yeah. I had no problems making it. Uh, so 
so when did you start? So we, we get in the car. I think you followed me and mm -hmm. you went to one of the places. I remember that like it was yesterday. Yes. We got in the yeah. elevator. We were talking and we were talking about uh -huh. Vegas because I lived in Vegas. You lived, lived in Vegas. Right. and we're, We had that, that common, you know, uh, bond. Right. And uh, I trusted you right away after we started talking, of course, because mm -hmm. you have that kind of personality. You're a people's person and I really like your energy and your vibe. And then we got upstairs and I showed you one of the units. Mm -hmm. It was on, on Michelson and Jamboree, right? At uh, yeah. Park Place. And uh, when did you start? Did you have any reservations when you walked in the place? You don't know me. I don't know you. Did you have any reservations about if I'm legit, if I'm just going to try to trick you to have sex with you? You or... know what? I, I was very comfortable. Like you, I was very comfortable. I don't know if it's just a vibe or, but th so because of the safety, like the place was safe. You know, it had the security measures with the place, which, of course, anything can happen in any place. You know, anybody mm -hmm. can get shot or or whatever in any place. So that's not really that important. But there was just something about you that made me feel I was safe regardless. Like I could do, you know, you were probably more more at risk than I was. <laughs> uh, well, obviously, I'm always more at risk because, you know, they always want uh, the guy, right? Well, no, um, I'm, I'm just saying as far as like, you know, I could have been some crazy girl. Right. You know? right. <laughs> so, but I had I had some really good intuition. This is where intuition comes in on your end and right. my end that we, we've been mm -hmm. around, we've experienced and, you know, you know, right. when, when even even now today, like when you just meet somebody, you, you got to have to oh, fall yeah, back you know. on your intuition because right. you can't really trust everything people tell you, unfortunately. Exactly. So tell us a little bit about the experience. So you started and then. You know, tell so, us, just, just go through it a little bit, like from your point, from your point of view. This is interesting because I never asked you these questions. <laughs> I know a, you haven't. You haven't even yeah. talked to me about this. But um, so we had that meeting and it was the next day, I believe, because I wanted to start working fast because I had the two girls and I had the divorce, my custody battle back in Las Vegas going on and I had to get a place. And so I had all this stuff going on when I met you. And um, so I wanted to start as fast as possible. And so you allowed me to go ahead and do my photos and everything. Like, I think, I believe it was the next night, which mm -hmm. was super quick. Um, so I did that and then started working that Monday. I think it was fr Friday or Saturday. I did my photos and then Monday I started working. And the first day, you know, I got into the to the apartment by myself. That was like the first time, you know, because both times you had just shown me where it was at. And um, and I was and I remember just sitting there going, okay, you know, I put the sheet down on the bed and I got everything ready on this nightstand and I'm just doing my thing, got all cute in my little lingerie, took pictures and sent them to you because that makes me comfortable. <laughs> so it's like this is what I'm wearing today. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, I remember. I remember. <laughs> um and then, uh, and then you, you, you know, you were like, I think before I even got there, because I remember waking up to the good morning sunshine. That's your text every morning. Good morning, sunshine. So, yeah. um, and I would wake up to that. And then you would tell me from that point whether I had an 11 o'clock. So that way I knew because, you know, you know how I am as far as I like my time because I'm way too OCD neat. And so, <laughs> um, so, you know, so you would tell me, but I remember that day was like, you're like, okay, you've got to be ready because new girls, like you're going to be busy all day. That's just what it is. And I was like, okay. So I remember just sitting there and I went out, went out to the balcony, which I don't smoke very much, but I smoke cigarettes occasionally. I went out to the balcony. Okay. I've got to smoke this cigarette. I can do this. No problem. Um, and it wasn't that being an escort was the problem. It was, I don't, I've never met this guy. Whoever's on the other side of that door, I don't know, which it's actually kind of cool because you don't know them and you don't have to get to know them. And it's, you know, it's like, OK, hi, bye, you know, <laughs> there, there's a certain a weird kind of weird level of excitement with it's all new, mm -hmm. right? Right. Maybe exactly. New to the business a new guy and new mm -hmm. new environment It's just uh, and some people can handle it. Like, that's why I say not if this is not for everybody, because right. not everybody can handle this. You know what I mean? So a right. lot of different you know, moving factors and variables that if somebody is not strong enough, you need to be really strong to do this job. Right, right. Because you have to have, you have to have a certain level of, well, you have to be aware. You have to be aware. You have to be aware that there is some risk to it, of course. But at the same time, you've got to be able to allow yourself the enjoyment of 
being there in the moment too. So you've got to be able to put that level of um, fear down. So let me ask you this. Um, did I give you at the time, did I, do you think I gave you enough information, enough training to, to get you ready for your first appointment? Yeah, well, I mean, okay, so during the during the actual sessions, there's nothing that you can actually train as far as mechanical, mechanics, you know? You either mm. know what you're doing or you don't or whatever. But as far as the actual job and the step-by-step -step procedures that you have in place to make it safe for me and you and the client, um, yeah, perfect. It was it was all perfect. You had it. You were probably the most organized person that I've ever seen to deal with such a a I want to um, a uncontrollable business. Mm -hmm. There's too many variables, right? Right, and because you, you never know. Have, you never know. Yeah, you have so, to have a system in place and follow it through a you know, one-way concept. This way, if something is off, you could you could detect it, especially when we have high volume, we work with a lot of right. people. So yeah, you right. have to be organized and you have to be really diligent. Right, sure. and, and with your organization and my OCD-ness, I think it kind of worked out well because I was able to know just by, okay, so this notification, because I set notifications or your ringtone and your text messages were different so i knew like okay he just sent me this he just texted me twice in a row that means this he's just sent me this so that means that so i knew just by listening to my phone exactly what was going on which was great um i knew exactly who i was who i was supposed to be seeing on the other side of that door whenever they did come in not that they would see me first but um no it was very organized very well um i mean Here's the thing, if I had to do it all over again, or if I, even if I didn't have to do it all over again, if you were still in business, I would still be going. Wow, <laughs> that's, mm -hmm. I take that as a compliment, thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, that's, I mean, I wouldn't do it any other way. And There's honestly, no Tanya, if it was legal, you know, we'll be having different conversation and we probably wouldn't be doing this, but mm -hmm. as you know, it's just, unfortunately, it is what it is. And, you know, we're stuck with, uh, with being well, in the country. It's the stigma. The problem is, is that, well, the biggest problem is that our government cannot figure out how to get their part of the money. Um, so because of that, until they do, just like legalizing marijuana, until they figure that part out, we're not gonna be able to legalize it. And it's a, unfortunately, there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. Every single male in this country and other countries pay for it. Mm -hmm. In one Pure way, shape or form, right. Right. Every single female in this country, at least, teach their daughter, which I got taught, which I've taught my daughter, there's power of the pussy. That's true. I mean, so we know that that's our leverage, quote unquote, from early on. Um, so we know how, how much it's worth. So why do you think that we expect before we give, you know what I mean? It's just ingrained in us. So to have it looked at so negatively is, it's almost baffling to me because, you know, I mean, even if you go back to all the way to uh, the beginning of man and woman, the man's natural, natural form is to like is to procreate well humans in general procreate and nobody's meant to just stay with one person like that's never been the that was never the goal that was never how we were supposed to be so you know and just because you're with just because you're physically with somebody doesn't mean that um that there's a connection you know oh absolutely you know I, sure. I i i it's funny because if my boyfriend ever you know cheated on me as long as he's not texting some chick and, and having an emotional relationship with them okay so you you wanted to get your dick wet okay cool go get it you know? do you think do you think guys and girls are, are guys and girls are, are wired different like i think that guys oh. you know are wired a certain way where they could totally love and i and i have you know as madam suzanne i spoke with a lot of our clients and they would you know totally do divulge information and share a lot of information with me about the, how much they love their wife and 
you know, right. they would never want him to, to find out because it will hurt them and they could mm-hmm. lose their marriage and they don't want to lose their wife and 30 year marriage and stuff, but they can't help it, right? It's something right. with the wiring. At least that's my theory, right? Well, but boys, I feel like guys are more shiny new toy and they're more, um, they like to, you know, to change it up. They lo- love to change it up. Um, and not for anything except for the physical, the physicalness of having sex with somebody else. It's not even, there's no emotional connection. Now, if a lady is stepping outside of their marriage or stepping outside of their relationship, there's an emotional connection that's missing. And that mm. is, that's where they're wired differently. And that's the problem with women is that we believe that guys are supposed to think like we do. And they don't. True. That is so true. Um, that's really, really interesting from your point of yeah. view. Uh, so um, in general, we don't have to go through details unless you want to. But how were, how were the clients at OC Farm like when we worked? You know what? I loved, I loved almost everybody. <laughs> almost everybody. Because, you know, I, I mean, I, I am kind of a people person. And I, you, are. you know, kind of a... Like to, I like to know people. I just like to, in general, get to know everybody because I feel like people are interesting. So um, for the most part, they were all very, very respectful, very, you know, they were businessmen. They come in their suits and I, you know, hang up their suit jackets and, you know, they take shower, do their thing beforehand. And we were very respectful for the, you know, for the most part. I had um, a couple of people I remember one guy who, I mean, I swear, if, if he could get the quickest award, the award for the quickest man ever in life, I swear, it, I mean, he was the best. It was just, I mean, it was literally not even 15 seconds. And I'm like, it took you longer to get here, take off your clothes. It took you longer to take off your shoes. <laughs> like, I mean, you know, but hey. I have a joke. I, I have a running joke. I made up this two pumps and a wiggle thing when, when guys uh-huh. come really fast. I guess this guy goes under like a half a pump and a wiggle. <laughs> yeah, I don't even think he needed a pump like, <laughs> at all. He, um, yeah, he was, he was the, oh, yeah. And then, I mean, occasionally you'd get, occasionally, like I had this one guy who was one of my regulars uh, before we closed. I didn't see him when we, when we came back, but before we closed the first time. And um, I mean, he would come like, like like two or three times a week. It was insane. And yeah. he would, and he would come for two hours. He would book two or three hours. Do you remember yes. who I'm talking about? Yeah. And he would sit, and he would sit there, and he wants me to be in a dress to start out with, and so I'd wear all these cute little dresses. And he'd bring champagne, and he, I mean, like I was his pseudo girlfriend. He really wanted the real girlfriend experience, this guy. Right, yeah, (laughs) exactly, exactly. And like literally for the entire two or three hours, we would sit there and chit chat and talk the entire time until like 15 minutes left. And then we're in the bedroom for four minutes and then he takes a shower and goes. But um, yeah, and he was, um, it almost got scared. Like it almost got weird, like creepy because he would come so much. And so he would try to ask about like, um, just too personal, you know, just too personal. And I would explain to everybody because I wasn't, the one thing that I was not good at was maintaining a persona that I didn't know because I'm kind of, um, one of those blatantly honest people. (laughs) So if I don't, if, so if it's not me, it's not me, you know? And so being Tanya, um, because I didn't really set up her whole persona, I kind of was Tanya in my own life. Like, does that make sense? Yeah. So I still have, I still had kids and I still had, you know, but I didn't really get specific. I just got, you know, I just kind of molded them together. So, but every once in a while he would try to get a little bit personal and I would tell him, look, you know, the reason why I do this is because I don't want people to know my personal life because I have a separate life where I'm a mom and I'm, you know, I'm a, I was still in college at the time as well, um, which I still am today because I'm getting my master's. So, um, so there's that. But, but yeah. So he, you know, when they cross that line of trying to, you know, it's a th- fine line because you don't want to be rude and you want to get to know these. Especially the clients. Most of my clients were regulars. They would come back, they, repeaters. You know. Yeah. So, 
Um, cause I'm kind of a, one of those high energy people. So it's either you like me cause I'm really high energy or not, you know? No, you're very like a lot of, a lot of the clients lo loved you. And that's why you, you had a lot of repeat clientele. You actually had over 50% of the clients came and saw you. They came and saw you again, mm -hmm. which is a really good, uh, yeah. good return rate. I know, <laughs> uh, tell us a little bit. So you're getting your masters. Could you tell the audience a little bit about your education and what are you getting your masters in and stuff? So I was, like I said, I was in the military and I was an electronics technician in the military. Um, I had, had already got my degree. I have a bachelor's of science in math um, because I'm pretty much a nerd, believe it or not. I'm just a nerd. I like football, so I'm kind of a guy's nerd. But um, uh, so I have my bachelor's in math um, and then I wanted to go back to school for, to get back into the computer world. And instead of going the hardware route, which is the electronics technician, I'm doing the coding route. So now I'm going. Oh, wow. I'm getting my master's in coding and programming and coding. So you don't you want to be a programmer? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. That takes a lot of. I tried programming, believe me, on my own. It's 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 not easy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. Especially like right like right now with um, with COVID. Okay, so I'm an online learner. That's the way my mind works. I don't need a professor right there where I have to go to class every day to try to, they'll confuse me more. So um, I, so I love online classes, which I'm right now going to a school that is affiliated with a, a, a good school, a great school here in Orange County. Um, but they're, they have a different online satellite school kind of thing, right? Well, now that COVID happened, we all have to Zoom class. Mm -hmm. So even the online kid, online students, we are now expected to be there on Zoom for a certain amount of hours every single day, like we were in going into class. So I think everybody's had to feel the switch of some sort, which is kind of killing me because, um, you know, it's just it's a waste of time for me. Like it's because I don't really pay attention because it's going to confuse me more. So it's just really a waste of time. But anyway, uh, so I'm learning multiple things because I was trying to graduate early. So I had already registered for five classes, six classes this semester. So I have six Zoom classes. Oh my God, you got and, a full load, full schedule. Right, and they're all, like I have two, like Java programming and Python programming. So I have to switch my mind over. Plus, you know, of course the maths and everything else, which is great. Like I don't have anything that's necessarily um, hard for me, like like a writing class. Like, don't give. I don't know. But so um, you see, one one of the things, one of my missions is to change the perception about that. Not everybody in this business is because they have a, you know, a heroin needle stuck in their arm. This is not why everybody does this business. <laughs> no. I'm trying to, I'm trying to show the difference between. This is what I'm trying. One of the things, missions I have is trying to show that, you know, there's some really brilliant people in this business. They just choose to do <laughs> this you. industry for whatever reason. And they get mm -hmm. in and they get out, most of them, right? They get in, get what right. they want out of it financially because they don't have the time or they don't have, you know, they just want to get there real quick or whatever it is. Right. And actually, there's a lot of brilliant people that in my, in my experience, I've met one yeah. of the, some of the most brilliant people, just like yourself, that, that's done this this business. So, I mean, I have I have really two dentists that I worked with, one in mm -hmm. Vegas, one in Orange County. They're, de they're practicing in dentist now. And mm -hmm. they started as a student with me. So, I mean, it's not like... You know, just like yourself, again, your masters in coding. I mean, that's mm -hmm. not an that's not an easy feat. You know, so congratulations no. on, on that. Thank on you. Positive affirmations. So, could you tell us a little bit about uh, as an escort in your mm -hmm. experience? What was the the pros and cons of doing it, if you will? Okay, so the, the pros. Okay, do you want me to just talk about the pros and cons of of doing it in general, or with you? versus trying to do it by myself after you closed. You can talk about both, whatever you want to talk about. <laughs> so, because I did, I tried to, um, tried to continue um, after, after you got to go on vacation. Um, <laughs> so let's talk about when you and I worked together because that's how we started. So tell right. me about the pros and cons and just please be honest because oh, I'm all about honesty and you know, I don't right. want the audience to think that we set this up because we haven't talked about any of this. No, 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 you don't, and you don't know most of it. Um, so the pros, of course, is number one, the money. Um, number two, I got my own place. So all the other girls had to switch to, 
switch up, but because I'm so OCD, you gave me my own place, which was a great thing because I can leave all my stuff there, which was also, from what I understand, one of the better things because they didn't really catch my unit on the on the end days. So, because I didn't have all these luggage coming with me out every day. But, um, right, right. so that was good. Um, the It did feed my need for sexual gratification, which is a pro. Um, cons. Let me, um, ask you, let, me, all... let me ask you about this first. Your sexual mm -hmm. need, right? Mm -hmm. uh, some women that do this business, just me and, me and talking with a bunch of them that they don't really feel anything or, or they're not on that level with the with the sex with the with the client right and some mm -hmm. of them very 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 minimal actually do they actually enjoy it they're nymphos mm -hmm. they're whatever you know whatever you want to call it and they just enjoy it totally so in your case you were one of those that actually enjoyed having sex with clients yeah yeah that's what and that's one of the reasons one of the main reasons of me choosing this as a profession because you know i really do enjoy it and like it's, it's yeah I enjoy it so so that's the pros now tell us a little bit about the cons when you worked with me um the cons are um you don't get to choose how long the clients get to, to get to stay or go you know some of the ones that you wanted to stay for an hour left at a half hour <laughs> some of the ones that you want to leave in 15 minutes stay for four hours <laughs> <laughs> You know, that's when, so, you act, I mean, that's when you're acting and people skills come in handy, you know? Right, exactly, exactly. Um, so there's that. Uh, I would say one of the cons, which is my own fault. Well, yes, it is my own fault. Um, another one of your girls had gotten the wrong apartment one day. And so I ran into her going to my apartment for the day. I stupidly befriended her so i know um, who you're talking about yes yes uh and her and i came from well because here i am out here in orange county again not knowing anybody broke up with my boyfriend so i was like oh here's a friend yay and um like i literally brought her into my life um and she ended up not only stealing from me while working with you. I remember So that. I ended up have, having to pay pay to work. Um, but she also then stole from me at my house. I, I, she had moved into my house for three days, by the way. You don't know this part. But yeah, she had asked me because she needed a place to go. She was dating one of your clients. Um, I and, found that out, yep. Yep, and she... Um, he ended up he ended up kicking her out because she was like messed up on all kinds of drugs so she ended up he ended up kicking her out so she asked to stay with me I, so i let her stay until she found a place or at least that, that was my plan and uh three days later i ended up kicking her out because she had a drug dealer at my house in my bedroom asking me for the re remainder of her money that she needed to pay a drug bill <laughs> yeah and did, i was did like this okay. happened after i went on vacation mm -hmm. or before mm -hmm. after so yep. just just for the audience sake so uh when i was working with tanya one day she didn't tell me that she had that girl at the, at the apartment because we're not supposed to have anybody over there especially not another girl and i did not know that you had you had met her right because i had already mm -hmm. gotten rid of her at the time i'd already fired her because i found out right. she was doing drugs and she's stealing clients and she's just not a cool person not a nice person so what happened just, just i'm just telling the audience Tanya, real quick yeah, just no what problem. happened was uh you couldn't find the money and it was mm -hmm. like over three thousand dollars that day yep. at the, up to that point and i'm like mm -hmm. what happened to the money and, and just something didn't jive with me but i let it go but you just you still had to pay your half because we already right. i already sent you all the clients and blah blah blah. And, right right and, 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 I didn't, knew, and i didn't complain about that at all like yeah, that because, wasn't even because you already knew that you you made, you made a mistake because you let right. the wrong person in right mm -hmm. But that was, yep. uh, that was unfortunate. So, right. But yeah, so, so that was definitely a con, but it was a con on my own part. Um, uh, I would say, um, the fact that it's that the legalities of it having to be, um, having to, paranoid. Lie, so, yeah, to be paranoid, to have, having to lie to people about what you're doing, yeah. you know, 
you know, I'm not, I'm not good at it. I'm not a good liar at all. Yeah, but so. the thing is, and I talk about all this in all these challenges in my, my, I don't know if I, did I send you my, my books at all mm -hmm. or no? Did I send you the second not book? Not your new one. Okay, not your new I'll send, one. I'll send it to you when we're done here. Uh, okay. So in uh, this, this second book, which is kind of like a textbook of how I did things, what we're talking about. I mm -hmm. talk about the challenges of being in this business and not one of the commandments. I have 13 commandments and one of them is you can't tell anybody. You really can't right. because people use it against you, Tanya. Yes. They will. You can't mm -hmm. like, I don't know if your boyfriend knew before or whatever, but it's, it's a challenge because it's a, it's a point of contention that they're always going to reach out. Oh, you know, right. I'm cheating on you because you sold, you know, your body or whatever. Right. And not only that, there's a trust issue because like, um, you know, even though, like my my boyfriend and I were best friends before we got together. And even though he knew exactly what I was doing and why, the reason why, I'm not doing it because I just want to be like, you know, sleeping around. I'm doing it, well, because I do want to sleep around, but I don't have a boyfriend. So, so. But you I needed need the have, money. You needed the money right, too. I need, that I need was the number money. one. I need the money and I need the sex because I need the sex every single day. So he knows, he knew this, but now like fast forward, now that we're dating, like that we're together and we live together, it's, um, it does create a trust issue based on the fact that, oh, well, you could easily have, you know, had so many guys and in a day, blah, blah, blah. Sorry that I can't serve your sexual needs, this and that, which, I've never not been loyal in my relationships. You know, when does, he I throw relationship. that, does he throw that in your face? Sometimes. Do you Sometimes. think he, do you think if he's cheating, uh -huh. and I'm not saying he is, but if he's right. cheating, do you think he's, he justifies that in his mind? It's I because... do. I do. So we had, um, we had, it was funny. We had gotten, to, when we first started dating and, and we ended up breaking up for a little bit because of this whole thing, of this whole thing and the hiatus that was taken and all that. Um, afterwards, like I had, I, I had a little holiday myself, but um, it was just a little one. But, um, which I'll tell you about that later. It's not important here. Anyway, so um, we broke up. He ended up, even though we saw each other still every day and we still did everything except call each other boyfriend, girlfriend, he ended up seeing two girls in Las Vegas while we were broken up. And his justification is, well, you did this, 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 and this, and this, like you have this much sex with all these other guys. And so you should get over the fact that you have to see these two girls that I fucked in your face every day. So, um, you know, so yeah, so he'll throw that. So he'll justify his actions based on previous actions that he wasn't even a part of. But, you know, so it does make it a little bit tough. And again, that's because of the stigma that's placed on this whole industry, which is just dumb. And that's why I have those uh, 13 commandments. And that's why I talk about right. them in my book, uh, How I Made a Million Dollars Here as an Upscale Escort. Uh, right. Did you have any bad experiences or crazy? Oh, wait a minute. Before we do that, tell me now about the pros and cons. You said after I went on vacation, you try to do it on your own. Tell me about that a little bit. Okay, so... Um, so because I enjoyed the fast money and I enjoyed the um, sexual gratification and I had plenty of return clients, I knew that if I somehow could get myself out there, that I would be just fine eventually, right? Correct. Um, of course, I didn't have anybody's phone numbers or any but way to contact any of my previous clients because I was very much a stickler to your rules because you had them in place for a reason. Yeah, you were so, loyal. You were loyal mm -hmm, for sure. Yeah. And I appreciate that. Yeah. So um, I ended up going to a, a website and being an independent on this website. And oh my gosh, the level of respect that I have for you, <laughs> just trying to be my own booker, just that aspect alone, not counting the safe environment with the the apartments and everything already there and, and doing all that not even counting that just that part alone just the booking you can't book and have fun at the same time it's just not possible like what are you going to be doing like no you can't do it you can't do it so um 
so the pros of, uh, well, the pros of doing it that way is that I got to keep my own money. Of course, mm -hmm. I didn't have to split it with anybody. Cons, I had to pay for my own hotel. And I, of course, didn't get a motel in or, you know, motel seven, whatever the heck, you know. So I made sure that I got an upper scale place because of you that um, upper scale clients will go to. Right. That's right. So, um, but I had to play, pay for my own place. I had to screen for myself, which I didn't know how to do at all, at all. So basically I was only as good as my intuition, which ended up me getting caught up. So that's like, I had to take up my own like little vacation because of that. And, and it was that really not, it was really not my fault. And it was really not me that they were after. They were after somebody that was at the hotel that I parked my car at. I didn't know that they were watching that hotel. So. It's trial and error, unfortunately. This is why I wish it was legal because I would really love to open a school. And this is what my second book was about is how I did it, the whole system. Mm -hmm. I wish I could, I feel so bad for people like, like what you did. You try to just make, make, make a living. I wasn't around. Right. And, uh, you know, you just end up getting caught up. And thank God it wasn't worse where you right. end up with a with a, a stalker or a rapist or a killer I or did, a robber. Well, I did end up with a stalker. I did end up with a stalker, like a really nice. bad stalker. That's what I ended up getting me off of this, out, off of the site and off of it, out of it for good. What Is site was it? HX, hum, Humaniplex. Okay, now remember what I told you about Humaniplex. I know, I know. But remember? hey, it, yes. That's why I never use it. And I think we talked about it. And I told you that Humaniplex yeah. is, and, and I apologize to anybody that likes Humaniplex. Humaniplex got a bunch of guys that f forces people. I mean, I know people that got HIV yeah. because of Humaniplex. Well, because I know, were, I, I know there's like this circle do, of, mm -hmm. they were, so, I, they were, I ended they up, were forcing them to do a uh, bareback right. full service for mm -hmm. like 200 bucks. I mean, I'm like, there's no money in the world. Right. And these, right. these girls have HIV because of it. So. That was the wrong right. place, but um. Yeah, and I and I know that whole inner circle of, the, I I one thing that I was lucky for as far as Humanaplex it was that I got to know the right people fast as far as inside the industry, um. But the so I knew who to stay away from fast. But, uh, again. But you got you got arrested. Oh yeah, I got arrested because yeah, I got arrested. And I'll tell um, you what, ninety nine point nine percent of the girls that try to do it like this. They always end up getting arrested and usually it's the first week or first month it doesn't really oh, yeah. last long because the cops know they know you're new right. and they target you and they know you get you're an easy target an easy number for them and that's right what they and do. see and i and i just fell in their lap because they were what was going on is they were actually had a sting across the street at a different hotel at a at a cd hotel across the street and i happened to leave my hotel room to go get some lunch that's all i was doing going to get some lunch. I said bye to, you know, I was dressed in normal clothes, said bye to the guy that was there, was about to go get my car, got in my car, started driving off, and here's cops behind me. So I pull over, no big deal. And they're like, we've been following you. You know why we pulled you over? Where's your pimp? And I said, my what? I wouldn't pay some, I wouldn't pay a pimp. But there's no way. But so yeah, so they were, they went to my hotel room to make sure there was nobody in there. They arrested me. I mean, I was I was out an hour later, but but how can they arrest you? Because they don't have they don't have the the crime. Because if you remember, um, I was on probation in Las Vegas, okay. <clears throat> and so they wanted to detain me to make sure that my probation officer didn't want to keep me. Oh, okay, okay. So that's because what they, they, were they couldn't get you on prostitution because they didn't have the client. They didn't have. They weren't setting, right, setting right, you because up because there was nothing. And they were like, "Well, what are you doing staying in a hotel if you live here?" And I said, "I have girls at home. I have daughters at home. Yeah. So I come here to enjoy my adult time." Yeah. By myself. Which is your, which are your privilege and your right. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. we live in the United States, still. Right. Exactly. And here's so another. So thankfully, I got. I got lucky yeah. there, but mm -hmm. here's another point, Tanya. Like when you said something about keeping all your money as an independent, I just want to tell the audience that that is true. However, there's a like every independent, with the exception maybe of two of them that I know, maybe three, that even though they were very smart and very successful and very, they could not make the money that you and I right. made. Even though you're yep. taking fifty percent of this much, 
it's better it's, than 100 exactly. percent of this much exactly and that's exactly you're exactly right because the amount of stuff that you have to do that's not that is usually not my responsibility because you were doing it <clears throat> um that takes your time so you can split your time in half right there the time that you have available split it in half so all these girls or all these people that say oh he took so much money from you blah 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 all this stuff well number one you didn't 50 50 me so um there was that uh and you're paying for the hotel you're paying for the condoms you're paying for the stuff in the in the i'm sorry i said hotel the apartment the stuff in the apartment you make sure that everything's taken care of water's in the fridge i mean like you stocked it not only that, but you're also booking. I mean, you ha you had a cell phone for each of us, as far as our own number. Mm -hmm. So um, you had to pay the for advertising. That. The advertising yeah. is a yeah. big expense. Exactly. So you paid for all of that. So if you take everything that you paid for, divided by the amount of girls that you had, um, that pay that I'm paying you is nothing compared to me doing it myself. Because I'm going to tell you something. You were still making. Mm -hmm more money than if you were doing it by right. yourself, right. especially the headache. And then there's a safety factor. I right. always tell people, you don't understand. You walk in the mm -hmm. door with no experience. Now, all of a sudden you have 30 years experience behind you. What is that yep. worth? What's your safety yeah. worth, right? Or yeah. you being, <coughs> God, mm -hmm. God forbid, you being, you know, get, let the wrong guy in because you're right. you and you just and then and then when you do have that vibe, like I had that vibe a couple times that I had to turn people away, but you've already booked out that time. So when you turn them away, you know, like there was two people, I remember it specifically, I had just happened to catch a glimpse of who they were like, as I was smoking a cigarette in the back. And so, and they just gave me this weird vibe. So I, you know, texted them, nope, sorry. And, um, but now you already booked your time. So now you've already lost that money in time, but at least you're safe, but still you have to, because I don't have the screening, because I don't have the, the um, experience, experience, there's just, I mean, it was just, it was nuts, but yeah. So, but like I said, I mean, would I do it again? 100% only with you. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I'll give you the hundred dollars. I promised you after the interview. I'm just kidding. Perfect. <laughs> just Perfect. Kidding. So, Perfect. um, can you tell us uh, like, without going into details, uh, or specifics, like what are you doing today for like a career? I know you're going to school, getting your master's. Are you right. working also? Or? Yeah, I'm in the, I'm actually in the mortgage business. I'm a loan processor. Nice. So, <laughs> so I do normal, normal, regular, regular people stuff, you know, work a nine to five. Have you had a, a, the adjustment of the income? Has that been difficult for you? It has, it has. Um, here's the thing is that. Of course, I can still loan processors make good money. Don't get me wrong. Um, and I can still pay my bills and everything else. But the amount of disposable money, because I got once I started working with you, I was able to pay off everything I had in debt quickly, like, I mean, real quickly. And I saved a lot. And, you know, I go to Las Vegas all the time for my daughter. Um, and so I had to, I have to say, because there's no way that I can go multiple times a month to see my kid and not save. So I was able to, with you, um, I had a lot more disposable money because I knew come Monday, I was going to, you know, start it. Make start more, you just make more. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, so it, it was an adjustment to get used to going back to actual budgeting for longer than a weekend. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, Tanya, like, uh, and I talk about this in a lot of my videos, uh, I kind of got stuck in that financial trap as well, doing it for so long and getting used to making 50 or 100 a week for mm -hmm. me and going from that to zero. And as you know, the government took everything. So it's been really right. a struggle for me, even though I still work just as hard seven right. days a week doing this. And, but the money know, doesn't come as easy. No, there's no such thing. <laughs> and I still have the right. same work ethic, you know, it's just I'm doing it differently now just because it's not legal. But right. it's a struggle, you know, again, used to the um, when you're on a certain level and getting mm -hmm. used to that where you drop a bunch of levels. And, and, and I mean, in, in my case, it's, it's definitely a lot worse than yours because, you know, mine started up here and it went all the way down. Right. I got I was fortunate to be able to have somebody in this business who, who needed a processor at the moment that I needed a job, which was very, very fortunate. So I didn't have to feel the 
super extreme just drop um but that being said it's a commission it's a commission job so um it was very hard for me to know that i'm working today and i'm working this week and i'm not going to get paid for this stuff for a month till the loan closes so right. um you know so it was kind of a uh it, it's definitely a change definitely a change so the money the money is is different right because you're not mm -hmm. making as much money and now what about the sex part do you do you miss that too <laughs> <laughs> well don't let your boyfriend see this <laughs> he's 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 not here he's he's in las vegas so no i mean don't let him away. see it like later because i'm gonna put mm -hmm. that i'm gonna post that right yeah that's fine no <laughs> he knows he knows how much i enjoy it and you know i mean of course i'm not getting it daily but i have my toys so it's okay you know it's, <laughs> I, I mean it's not the same but you know he does he does the best he can how about that that's a good answer yeah you need uh yeah definitely you have <laughs> to be with a super turbo guy to fulfill right. your uh your sexual yeah, i don't i don't think any one man could ever fulfill me you know just as far as like actual like satisfaction for me not to grab a toy or something <laughs> Yeah, you have a very high libido. Yeah, for sure. So, um, so you already talked about you thinking this should be legalized, right? Oh yeah, as far absolutely. As okay. So now, do you have do you have anything else you want to add? I mean, I, I really, I think I asked every question that I wanted to ask. But if, if there's anything else you want to add, please do. No, I mean, I really don't have anything else to add. It should it should be legal. Um, I don't think that people should be criminalized for for natural things. And um, I don't think that anybody should be able to pass judgment on somebody based on them accepting cash instead of gifts, instead of food, instead of whatever else. Um, and I think that uh, I think everything would be a lot better if we did not if we did not criminalize prostitution. I think personally that the sex trafficking would go down tremendously. I agree. And um, now there's going to be, of course. Here's the, uh, the opposite side because I like to play both sides. There's going to be something in its place, just like with legalizing marijuana. Now we have the meth problem, right? right. So there's going to be something in its place. I'm not sure what that is, but I don't believe that we're going to. I believe that we're going to go down um, in sex trafficking crimes. I agree. I agree. We'll leave it at that. Thank you so much, Tanya. I really appreciate it. Really appreciate no you coming here. It was it was a blessing and an honor, and I'm so oh, happy thanks. that you're doing well. And uh, I wish you nothing but the best. And I love you, and uh, uh, I'm glad that you're doing really good. Oh, thanks. Love you too. All I'll right. talk bye to you bye. later. Bye. 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 bye.